Never in the history of console releases have two competing systems had so much in common. The PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X are launching at the same time, at the same price, and with almost the exact same hardware. What factors differentiate these new console kings, and which one is right for you? That's what we're talking about today. The PlayStation 5 is the most extreme Sony console ever. It's fast, powerful, and brings some much needed innovation to the console space. For $499, you get a 4K capable gaming machine, next gen features, Ultra HD Blu ray player, wicked fast SSD storage, and an 8K HDR capable HDMI 2.1 connection. There is a digital edition available for $399, but for the sake of this comparison, we're only looking at the most premium devices offered by each manufacturer. The Xbox Series X is the competing console for Microsoft and likewise comes in at $499. Like the PS5, the Series X is also a 4K gaming machine with next-gen features, Blu-ray player, SSD, and HDMI 2.1. There's a lower-priced Series S available for $299, but again, won't be included in this comparison. If you decide to buy any of these consoles by the end of this review, do us a favor by using our affiliate links down below. This video isn't about which console is best, it's about which console is best for you. I'm going to compare the systems in six key areas. Styling, performance, controllers, games, user experience, and special features. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have enough information to decide which system is a better fit. Let's kick things off with my first impressions. Unboxing the PS5 left a lot to be desired. The box opened in the most inconvenient direction possible, the outer sleeve suctioned to the inner cardboard, and nothing was presented nicely to me. Obviously, no one should buy a console for the unboxing experience alone, but Sony could definitely learn a lot from Microsoft in this arena. Microsoft correctly recognized that unboxing their new console would be an experience watched by millions of potential customers. The easily removable tape didn't ruin the finish, the box opened in the correct direction, generous foam padding kept the console secure, and a tasteful insert invited me to power my dreams. While styling is entirely subjective, I feel it's important to mention since it's demonstrative of the ethos behind the respective consoles. It seems that Sony engineers had an idea of what they wanted the PS5 to look like before they knew what would actually be inside it. The sloping white side panels sandwiching a black core is a striking and elegant design that looks like no other PlayStation before it. If you go to your neighbor's house and you see this thing on his living room entertainment center, you know he has the latest and greatest hardware. But it takes a lot of airflow to keep those toasty next-gen components cool. If you've seen the teardown videos, you'll notice that almost half of the internal volume of the PS5 is dedicated to thermal management. Sony managed to keep the console cool and quiet, even if it is a bit on the bulky side. Microsoft, on the other hand, took a different approach. Examining the Series X, you get the impression that performance was top of the priority list, and the console was designed literally around that goal. The Xbox is also an attractive console, but in the same way a Swiss Army knife or a Glock firearm can be attractive. Its purpose is self-evident, and any styling, if you could even call it styling, is merely a side effect of its primary purpose. There's no fins, curves, glossy accents, or two-tone paint. The only real character to speak of are the subtle green accents inside the exhaust holes. What I'm getting at here is both of these consoles are beautiful pieces of technology, but for entirely different reasons. I personally I personally prefer the more understated look of the Series X, I think it's going to age better, but there's no denying the PlayStation 5 is a more eye-catching device. The I.O. on both consoles is almost identical, with a port selection that's noticeably trimmed down compared to previous generations. Around the back there are two USB 3.0 ports, Ethernet, HDMI 2.1, and a power plug. The Xbox also has a proprietary SSD expansion slot. Up front, both consoles have USB 3.0, but the PS5 has an additional Type-C port. 
Both Sony and Microsoft look to AMD to develop the microarchitecture of their new consoles. Both systems are using an 8-core Zen 2 processor, but the Xbox is clocked a bit faster at 3.8 gigahertz compared to the PS5's 3.5. Both consoles are also running 16 gigs of GDDR6 RAM, but the Series X has a larger interface of 320 bits versus the 256 bits found on the PS5. The Xbox also has 10 gigs of RAM set to 560 gigabits per second versus the PS5's 448 gigabits. Graphics on both systems use AMD's RDNA 2 architecture. The Series X has 52 compute units running at 1.825 gigahertz. The PlayStation has only 36 compute units, but maxes out at a blistering 2.23 gigahertz. On paper, the Xbox is capable of over 12 teraflops of computational power compared to the 10.3 teraflops managed by the PS5. The Series X also also has more visual features enabled that are mysteriously missing on the PS5, variable refresh rate and 1440p capability being chief among them. Despite the superior specs of the Series X, most thorough game comparison channels have concluded that the PS5 has a small performance advantage. In practice, the consoles deliver a nearly identical graphical experience, with the PS5 providing a slightly improved frame rate. But again, the use of VRR on the Xbox delivers a much smoother experience than the few extra frames the PlayStation may be getting. While both systems use SSDs for storage, this is the area of the spec sheet where the consoles diverge the most. The PS5 has an 825 gigabyte drive with a throughput capacity of 5.5 gigabytes per second raw and nine gigabytes per second compressed. This compares favorably to the 2.8 gigabytes per second raw and 4.8 gigabytes per second compressed figures of the Xbox. However, However, the Xbox drive is about 20% larger at one full terabyte. Not to mention, the way the storage and system RAM are configured on the Series X allow for quick resume, a feature that negates the speed advantage of the PS5 in certain situations, but we'll talk more about that when we get to special features. The PS5 continues supporting external USB drives, but only for PS4 games. PS5 games must be stored on the internal drive or an optional NVMe SSD expansion. However, the drive needs to be an M.2 form factor, PCIe 4.0, and support speeds at least as quick as the internal one. Microsoft decided on a different method of storage expansion. While the Series X likewise supports external drives, it has a proprietary expansion slot. This purpose-built storage technology was designed to enable their new velocity architecture and unlock some really cool new features. One terabyte expansion cards for the Xbox consoles are available now for $219. Now this may sound expensive, but the cheapest drive I could currently find that meets Sony's requirements is a Western Digital SN850 at $229. The controller is another area where the PS5 and Xbox Series consoles have taken radically different positions. PlayStation is employing the approach seen with most new console generations, where the controller sees significant design changes and adds increased functionality. Xbox is simply taking a design that worked well for the Xbox One and is using the new console launches as an opportunity to make a number of minor yet impactful changes. The PS5 controller, aptly named the DualSense, has has contoured edges, a black and white finish, and a larger touchpad. The Xbox controllers have actually decreased in size, but not by an amount most people would notice. The DualSense is 33% heavier than the last generation and is larger in almost every dimension. The improved shape and weight distribution help the DualSense feel less cumbersome than its increased size and weight would suggest. If you've ever used an Xbox One generation controller, the series controller should feel very familiar. The most noticeable difference, however, is the more tactile texture that lines the bottom and now extends to the triggers and bumpers. The increased weight of the DualSense comes from a larger battery, new adaptive triggers, and advanced haptic feedback. These new haptics come courtesy of voice coil actuators and are a dramatic improvement over the traditional rumble motors we've been used to. Right behind the triggers are an additional pair of motors with screw gears. These dynamically adjust the pressure required to actuate a trigger pull and change where that resistance begins. Developers can utilize these technologies to create revolutionary new experiences. 
experiences. In practice, this was incredibly immersive and really felt like the next big step in controller technology. The list of innovations added to the new series controllers is much shorter. There's now a share button to make capturing and sharing your favorite moments easier, a more precise D-pad, USB-C to replace micro USB, Bluetooth LE to improve battery life, and enhanced proprietary connection to decrease latency and improve stability. The additions made to the PS5 controller are about introducing the player to new sensations. The changes made to the Series X controller are about improving performance and comfort. After using both, the Xbox gamepad feels more grounded and accurate, and frankly is better at just being a controller. The DualShock 4 will work with the PS5, but only with PS4 games. You also cannot use the new DualSense controller with the PS4 console. Conversely, all Xbox One controllers will work with series consoles, and all series controllers will work with Xbox One consoles. The new DualSense controller costs $70. Now that may sound like a lot, but considering all the new technology packed into it, that actually seems pretty fair. If anything, it makes the $60 Xbox controller now feel overpriced. When you take away re-releases, remakes, and games offered on other platforms, the PlayStation launch lineup is pretty weak. Spider-Man Miles Morales, Astro's Playroom, and Sackboy A Big Adventure are the standout titles. Even out of those, Astro's Playroom is the only one exclusive to the PS5 and comes bundled with the console. But if the PlayStation launch was weak this generation, the Xbox launch was entirely non-existent. Now, Microsoft planned to launch Halo Infinite with the Series X, but that has now been pushed back to holiday 2021. Quality exclusive games are an area where Sony has completely dominated Microsoft for the last several years. When you compare the Gears of War, Forza, and Halo titles that came out on Xbox One to The Last of Us, God of War, and Uncharted games that released on PS4, there's really no comparison. Both consoles start this generation with a relatively blank slate, and with Microsoft's recent acquisitions of Double Fine, Ninja Theory, Bethesda, and others, it will be exciting to see if the series generation can churn out killer exclusives like the Xbox 360 did. A growing segment of players are turning to subscription services to satiate their need to try new games and experiences. Both PlayStation and Xbox offer similar services, however Microsoft's Game Pass is widely regarded as a superior option to Sony's PS Now, where PS Now only offers game streaming, which is largely dependent on internet reliability. Game Pass allows players to stream or download games locally. Game Pass games can be streamed not only to a console or PC, but Android devices as well with other platforms on the horizon. Not to mention, Game Pass just has a better library of games, including the growing number of Microsoft IPs, EA Play, and a large rotating catalog of games from third-party studios. Game Pass Ultimate includes both Game Pass for console, Game Pass for PC, and Xbox Live for 15 bucks a month. Not to mention, Xbox will give you a heads up when a game's about to leave Game Pass and often provide a significant discount just in case it's one you want to keep in your library permanently. Game Pass is hands down the best value in gaming out there. Thankfully, the PS5 is backwards compatible with PS4 games. Titles like God of War, The Last Guardian, and Final Fantasy are now running at higher resolutions and frame rates, breathing new life into these already stellar PS4 experiences. And just to be clear, PS4 games will not need to be repurchased for the PS5 if you already own them. The Series X also offers backwards compatibility for Xbox One games, but extends compatibility to over 600 Xbox 360 games and 39 original Xbox games. These likewise will not need to be bought again if you purchased them digitally or happen to still have the discs laying around. In total, there are over 4,000 games playable on the PS5 at launch and about 2,700 playable on the Series X. While there are a lot of memes going around about Xbox not having games, Games, as you can clearly see, there's no shortage of games to play on either platform. PlayStation has better exclusives and a larger overall library, but Xbox has better backwards compatibility and a superior subscription service. The setup process on both consoles has been streamlined since last generation, but only Xbox allows you to configure your console settings through the mobile app while the system downloads initial updates. You can even import settings and saved game data from a previous generation console associated with your account directly from the cloud. The PS5 asks that a previous generation PS4 
remain plugged in and connected to the same network in order to copy these settings. Both systems remain relatively cool and quiet, but it may be more difficult to find room for the PS5 given its larger size and airflow requirements. The robust Xbox companion app has been around for a long time, but it's recently undergone an overhaul in preparation for the series consoles. The app allows you to stream games from your console to your phone, control your system with a virtual remote, join chat and voice parties, buy and download games to your console, and most notably view and share captures on various social media outlets. Sony has recently revamped their mobile app as well and offers features that were noticeably missing before. The PS Messages app has been dissolved and its functionality absorbed by the PlayStation app. It also allows players to start party groups and voice chats with up to 15 friends. There's also some PS5 remote functionality with the mobile app, as it allows players to purchase games, download and launch games, manage system storage, and sign into their PS5 directly from the app. Although the Series X is an entirely new console, the interface is almost identical to the Xbox One. The biggest change is the restructuring of the interface to stack sections vertically. Navigation is noticeably snappier and doesn't seem to get stuck. The PS5 places all content into two broad tabs, games and media. When hovering over a game, the music and background art and game-specific content change to match the game. The media tab houses all of the available streaming and other non-gaming content in one place. When in a game or application, pressing the PlayStation button brings up the control center. The control center provides a quick way to modify settings, check game progress, or navigate around PlayStation without interrupting the current experience. The layout on both systems is intuitive and easy to navigate. However, Xbox gives the user many customs options that PlayStation has seemingly taken away. The PS5 interface will change dynamically depending on the game or app currently selected. This streamlines the user experience, but takes away the ability to customize the interface to the player's liking. With the exception of the top section, which always displays recent content, library, and spotlight, all other sections of the Xbox UI can be removed, added, or moved around as the player sees fit. Players can also change the theme and color, and even make the home screen tiles more or less transparent. Backgrounds can be a solid color, game art, achievement art, a custom image screenshot, or a dynamic background. The Xbox Series X has one final trick up its sleeve, known as Quick Resume. By caching information into the solid state drive, the system is able to quickly recall that game dump the next time it's accessed. A splash screen appears briefly before restoring the game to its previous state, and you're right back in the action. You can have a handful of modern AAA games or lots of smaller games suspended at once. What's really impressive, since the game is cached on non-volatile storage, Quick Resume works even if the console has been completely powered off and unplugged. The PlayStation 5 has a faster drive, yes, but switching between games requires the player to start the game up cold, watch the splash screens, read the warning screens, navigate the menu, load up the last save checkpoint, and then play from the previous checkpoint up to the point where the session was terminated. The area PlayStation has innovated that has remained unexplored by Xbox is virtual reality. PSVR was introduced with the PS4 and has seen minor improvements since its inception. While technically supported by the PS5, you have to submit a request to have Sony send you a special adapter to even use it. Even then, the games and experiences don't really run any better than on the old console. Given how rapidly the VR space has improved in just a few short years and that Sony is willing to support virtual reality, a PSVR 2 could bring a host of new features at an attractive price point. Xbox has been living in PlayStation shadow for the better part of a decade. It was clear even from the E3 2013 event that Xbox would be fighting an uphill battle in the eighth console generation. However, under the direction of Phil Spencer, Microsoft is apparently doing everything in their power to avoid making the same mistakes. But as I said in the beginning, I'm not declaring a winner here, just providing you with information needed to make an informed decision. The biggest factor determining which console you should get is the console you already have. There isn't one killer advantage of either new system to justify jumping from one ecosystem to another. You'd be losing your games library, subscriptions, saved game data, personalized profile, achievement progress, friends list, and probably a dozen other things I'm not thinking of. If you have a PS4 and you've been happy with it, get a PS5. If you have an Xbox One and you're happy with it, get a Series X. 
it's a pretty straightforward recommendation. The calculus becomes a little more complicated if you happen to own both of the previous generation consoles or neither of the previous generation consoles. The key advantage of the PS5 are better exclusives, slightly better real-world performance, and a revolutionary new controller. The key advantages of the Xbox Series X are Game Pass, more performance features, and quick resume. Ultimately, you'll have to decide which of those advantages more closely align with your personal priorities. Did this comparison help you decide which console to get? Let me know which one you're considering in the comments below, and I'll try to answer your questions there. All products mentioned in this video can be purchased using our affiliate links, and down there you will also find links to purchase our shirts, which help us out directly. A special thanks to my friend Josh Kicks for lending me his PS5 for this comparison. Find his Instagram also in the description where he hosts contests and giveaways. Also make sure you subscribe here to catch all of our Xbox and PlayStation coverage. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.